All right, guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new here to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button to keep up to date with the latest PlayStation and gaming industry news, rumors, and leaks. Also supports me as a content creator and helps grow the community and the channel. So when the Xbox Series X and S were announced, followed by the PlayStation 5, we all expected both sets of consoles to sell relatively well. Deep down, I think we all expected the PS5 to outsell the Series X and S consoles, right, if we're all honest with ourselves. Perhaps we didn't expect the margin in difference to be so great. Both sets of consoles launched in 2020 and I can't believe it's already four years since they were, in fact it's more than four years since they launched. It's unbelievable how time flies. With the PS5 breaking records early doors in sales, COVID kicked in and not only started to slow down sales, it literally brought everything to a halt. Worldwide everything stopped. The global supply chain was in chaos. This naturally had an impact on the Xbox and PlayStation sales. Once COVID passed though and the supply chains returned back to normal, manufacturing ramped up. Console limitations were a thing of the past and finally sales started to move forward again. Well, at least for PlayStation, that was the case. It's been clear now for a while that the PS5 outsells the Xbox consoles, though the numbers from PlayStation's last quarter, according to Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmed, were significant. So he suggests that the PS5 outsold the Xbox Series X and S by nearly 5 to 1. He goes on to say the PlayStation 5 shipped 4.5 million units in the last quarter, according to estimates, that's almost five times more than the Series X and X shipped at the same period. So it's quite staggering. If these numbers are not telling you something needs to change at Xbox, I don't know what else to really say. Hey, five to one is shocking. There's got to be a change surely in the Xbox strategy. But then again, you don't need an Xbox anymore to play Xbox games. You can play them on your PC. Hell, you can even play some of them on your PlayStation. So I can understand why sales are sluggish and why many gamers are opting for a PlayStation as their main console supported by PC where you can pick up most of the Microsoft games. So it explains why I suppose the sales have dropped off by so much on the Xbox console. So I suppose great numbers from a PlayStation perspective, but still concerns from an Xbox perspective. Maybe maybe the numbers will change once we see the uh, the Xbox showcase uh, next month in June. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, we have an update on the Ghost of Tsushima game coming to PC. So Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is launching on PC later this week. A week of controversy, especially when it comes to PlayStation and Steam linking. I feel this issue is just going to go on and on until PlayStation or Sony finally fixes it. Unless Sony a Unless Sony's account requirements gives gamers from over 150 regions, I think it's actually 180 or 187 regions or so, but Sony needs to allow people access to be able to create a PSN account in those regions. I don't understand why it's so difficult. If those regions can create and connect to a Steam account, why can they not connect to a PSN account? Does anyone know? Does anyone have a reasonable answer? I don't, I honestly don't know why. But surely a company like Sony should have an answer for this. Developer Sucker Punch and Nexus, who are porting Ghost of Tsushima to PC, they've just released a new clarification about the game. So regarding Steam Deck playability, the game's single player campaign will indeed be playable on the Steam Deck. However, there's a caveat, all fire. On the game's Steam page, the developers clarify that the multiplayer version of Ghosts of Tsushima, that's the Legends mode, will not be playable on Steam Deck. It's another issue around multiplayer that's going to cause a problem for the multiplayer Legends mode on Ghosts of Tsushima. So the multiplayer mode and PlayStation's insistence that players link their Steam accounts to a PlayStation account has already resulted in the game being delisted from over 150 countries. This is due to obviously the requirement for Sony needing to connect to the PlayStation Network, total compatibility with the Steam Deck, which is not on the table. So therefore, it's not an option. A lot of gamers are going to be really keen to play Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut on the handheld gaming device like a Steam Deck. The single player experience, including the Iki Island expansion, can be played on the Steam Deck and similar handheld gaming PCs. But the single player game has been opted Optimized to deliver the best gaming experience on those devices. So it's going to be great if you enjoy that type of stuff, right? If you enjoy playing on a, on a handheld, it's going to be great. However, Steam marks the game as unsupported for Steam Deck. This is due to the Legends Co-op multiplayer mode requiring Windows Access PlayStation Network integrated features, which it doesn't do. So there you are, right? I can see, again, this is going to cause an issue for some people, and I can imagine there will be lots of people over social media complaining about it like it's the end of the world. However, oh, even though the online multiplayer mode is accepted, 
exceptional. I do feel many people are going to play the game because of its single player game, right? For me, it's a single player to story the campaign that does it. And to experience this full campaign in the Ultra Max settings on a PC will be fantastic. Let me know if you plan on picking up this game on PC. I'll be getting this later in the year on PC. The console version was amazing and it's by far one of my favorite games. But right now I've got a lot of um, backlog in my games to clear. So for me, this is going to have to wait a while. So let's move on and let's talk about Sony acquisitions because this is this is also something that's been brought up in the, uh, the gaming news arena. So after Sony announced the acquisition of Bungie a few years back, I think a lot of us were caught off guard by the announcement. I don't think many of us really got it, especially paying over $3 billion for it. It didn't really make much sense. But then as Sony laid out some of its plans around the live service model, things started to make sense. After all, whether you're a fan of Destiny or not, the game has been going on and has been heavily supported by a loyal fan base um, and with new content for the best part of 10 years. Right, Bungie supported that game for over a decade. Sony saw this and thought to themselves, well, if one or two of our studios could make a live service game which lasts a decade, we can make a lot of money on it. In fact, we can make a shit ton of money on it. In fact, we can make 10 years of microtransactions on that game. But then it all backfired. We all know about the issues internally at Bungie and of course, their views on what happened with The Last of Us multiplayer and it all got very messy in the end. But why am I talking about this, you may ask? Well. Sony Group has said that its investment activity, which includes PlayStation acquisitions, will be more measured going forward. So in an earnings call yesterday, CFO and Chairman Hiroki Totoki revealed that the current fiscal year, PlayStation is expecting to incur expenses to the tune of 52 billion yen. And that's related to the acquisition of Bungie. So about $3 billion, give or take. So presenting Sony's group financial results for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2024, Totoki said that the company as a whole will continue to explore opportunities to purchase IP alongside eyeing mergers and acquisitions. And Sony has earmarked 1.8 trillion yen yen, which is about just shy of 10 billion pounds for strategic investments. And that's over the next three years, but didn't reveal how much of this has been allocated to its gaming division. Hiroki Totoki goes on to say, we will continue to work towards mid to long term growth of our business through such means as acquisitions of IP and mergers and acquisitions. But we intend to emphasize investment efficiency and be more selective in that strategic arena. PlayStation has made several strategic investments in recent years, including investment of Fortnite maker Epic Games and in From Software. However, the acquisition of Bungie was Sony's biggest purchase in recent years, but it didn't stop the company from welcoming smaller studios to the PlayStation family like Bluepoint Games and Housemark. I think Sony learned their lesson with the large acquisition of Bungie. It was totally against tradition and character of the types of studios Sony typically goes after in acquisitions. They historically have worked with smaller studios. They tend to work with them on a game or two, or they support and collaborate on a number of games before then acquiring the studio. And I hope Sony continues to invest in small Smaller studios, the likes of Bluepoint Games, who did a sterling job with Demon Souls, and Housemark, who did a fantastic job with making Returnal, and then Sony swooped in and purchased them. What do you think will be next on Sony's list of studios that they would like to realistically acquire? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments about today's topics, and I will catch you on the next video.